So the big idea here is that the gravitational force we feel near the surface of the Earth that just makes a constant acceleration is the same as this general expression that we just talked about. And this was Newton's big insight, is that this Earth-bound force and the force that causes the motion of the planets and the moon were the same. So let's go ahead and use it for something uh, astronomical. Or, well, not quite astronomical. Let's use it for some numbers. Let's just run some numbers for the Earth and the moon and see what we get, because it'll be fun. Let's see. So let's get the force between them. And just to see what the magnitude is, who knows? So let's see. So here's the Earth, and the mass of the Earth is 6 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. And somewhere out here, not to scale, is the moon. And the mass of the moon is uh, 7.3 times 10 to the 22. Kilograms. Okay, so less massive. So we can run the numbers real quick. So the magnitude of the force, we don't really want to think about directions right now, is g, 6. Point, oh, I'm getting there, 6.67 uh, times 10, 6 and 4. I don't know why I can't remember that number. 7, 4 times 10 to minus 11 times the two masses, 6 times 10 to the 24, 7.3 times 10 to the 22. Over the separation squared, how far is it from the Earth to the moon? It's a long way. 3.85 times 10 to the 8. Meters squared, all in MKS units. You do all that, and you get an easy number to remember. 2 times 10 to the 20 newtons. That's a big force. Well, it takes a lot of force to pull the moon in a circle. The moon's kind of big. The force is big. This number is small. Gravitational forces tend to be weak. It's pretty far apart, but they're really heavy. Right? These are big, massive objects that we're talking about. So 2 times 10 to the 20 newtons. Let's see if we can use that to think about the orbit of the moon a little bit. So now that we've talked about this force that always pulls to the center, we can already think about how that influences circular motion. Because remember, in circular motion, such as an orbit, right, we have the moon here. We know circular motion, you've got some speed that you're going v, and it happens because you have a centripetal force giving you a centripetal acceleration. So for a simple orbit calculation, you basically just say this, the g m m over r squared force, is the centripetal force, and it goes around. So let's see if we can figure out how fast the moon goes and see if we get the right answer. So we would say 2 times 10 to the 20 newtons equals uh, mv squared over r. Mass of the moon times the speed of the moon over r, which is was this radius here, 3.85 times 10 to the 8. But what I want to do is I don't really know the speed of the moon. Does anybody know how, I don't know, how fast the moon is going? No, they don't know. What we're going to do is change it real quick to the period. Because I know the period of the moon, right? It's about a month. What is it, 28 days, 27 days? So the period, it's uh, 2 pi r, the circumference of the orbit, and the v was squared, over the period squared. So we change the formula like that. Then we can solve for the period and see if we get what you're supposed to get. So, you know, we could simplify it and just square the 2 pi, and that becomes r, and it's like that. We can bring the t squared over here, and uh, we got our, uh, oh, that's mass of the moon, right? Yeah, so let's see, we'd have the mass of the moon, 7.3 times 10 to the 22, right there. We'd have 4 pi squared there. We'd have the radius of the moon, or the, the distance there, 3.85 times 10 to the 8. This is getting a little unnecessary because we already used all these numbers here. We can't cancel them. Um, over nothing. There's nothing left. Oh, over the force. 2 times 10 to the 20 newtons. Anyway, if you do that and take the square root, you get that t is 2.3 times 10 to the 6 seconds. 2.3 times 10 to the 6 seconds. I don't really think of my life in seconds. Right? I think of it in hours and days. If you divide that by 3,600 to get it to hours, and you divide it by 24 to get to days, you get 27.2 days, which is about right.
for the orbital period of the moon. So you can see this F equals GMM over R squared. You already know how to use it. You've already thought a lot about forces and kinematics. Pretty basic force, and you can apply it uh, in a lot of places.